Hello and welcome back to the Rope Access and Climbing Podcast, YouTube edition. I am your host, Mikey Stevenson, and today I'm diving into episode number two of this little short series of how to haul or lower knots through your control descent device. If this is your first time here, please make sure to subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. So stay tuned. Step into your harness and get ready for a podcast about the vertical world. All right, well, thank you very much for tuning into today's episode. So today, like I said before, we are going up into episode number two of this kind of little short series of how to haul or lower through a, uh, a knot or past a knot. Now, today we are going to haul the knot through the uh, control descent device. This is obviously not something that you want to do, but it's a good skill to understand and know. Um, this is obviously a real bad situation if you actually have to do this in the field. So do everything in your power to avoid these sort of situations, but the skills are extremely important. Now, in the event that you are having to haul or lower through knots, this is obviously something that would come into the conversation of poor planning. Um, and something that I tend to tell my crew members when I'm out working with them, piss poor planning leads to piss poor performance. Obviously you don't want to fall into that, per, uh, that situation. So in the event that you do, let's learn the skills on how to get past it. So, um, the equipment that you are going to need to keep this as simple as possible um, is a trusty Grion. Um, that's what we're gonna be using today. So just like the hauling the knot through the descent device, we used a Grion, we'll use that again today. Um, spare carabiners, always a good thing to have. Um, a basic or some sort of a rope grab and a pulley and then I have a tib lock and a roll clip. So obviously these are pretty much the exact same thing. This is a little bit bulkier than this. Um, this is a little bit heavier than this. So it depends on your industry. If you're in the mountain rescue side of things, obviously you're looking at options to reduce weight. Um, in cases you're gonna be using, looking at tib locks or like Prusiks. Um, industrial, commercial, you're gonna be basically probably carrying this around. I know that a lot of training centers prompt any level two and any level three to be carrying around a basing a pulley. At the end of the day, each to their own, it is what it is. So uh, these are the basic tools that you're gonna be requiring to achieve this task. All right, so now we're looking here at our basic uh, dis uh, control descent device. So we got the anchor sling around our nice trusty tree. We got a carabiner here. I like to always include a carabiner with every single sling and this creates this bridle effect. Um, and the, why that's really important in these sort of uh, circumstances and why it's a good thing to always have this carabiner is in the event that something drastic happens and you have to break into this system or you have to do whatever, you always have this bridle to attach to. You're not piggybacking off of the descent device um, carabiner. And then I have this knot up here, which is approximately six or seven feet um, down line from us here. So what I want to do here is I'm going to just haul this line up, get this knot closer, and then we're going to start introducing uh, the equipment uh, to achieve this task. Now, I'm going to be using the roll clip and the tib lock here. Um, this is kind of my go-to. It's lightweight. It packs nicely. Um, for the people that haven't used tib locks, this is obviously the, you know, the original tib lock. They don't bite down as good as the new ones but still a great piece of equipment. So slap the tib lock on, got my roll clip, slide that on, great. Okay, now all we're gonna do is uh, a, 
is create our standard three to one haul system. Because I'm hauling up here, there we go, we got our three to one. I'm gonna move this down, I'm gonna pull my load up, readjust, okay, right up to that knot there. And I can just keep going as I can. All right, I'm a little bit close here, kind of getting out of my uh, reach. So all I'm gonna do is remove the tib lock and put it onto the other side of the knot. Okay, my goal here is to get this knot as close as I possibly can. And I will even bury this knot into the descent device because I wanna reduce how much uh, throw I have to rely on with the Grion. So slide this up, keep pulling. Okay, there we go. Obviously it's buried, it can't go any further. Excellent. All right, so now remove this. That is what we have. Okay, grab my trusty Grion and a couple carabiners, get those back in my hands. All right. So, next up is introducing our Grion. All right, so now this is where we're talking about that bridle situation. I don't have to do anything, make it nice and easy, super tidy, all right? I'm gonna run this out as much as I need to, but making sure that I still have enough tail here to achieve my task. And what we're doing here, if you haven't checked out the first video, which I'll link up here in the top right hand corner, is we're doing a load transfer. Obviously our load is suspended on here. We're going to transfer the load onto the Grion and then basically adjust the knot and then transfer the load from the Grion back onto the rig. Okay, and that's all we're trying to achieve. All right, now, we're gonna jump into the, uh, the basic and the pulley here. All right. Put the basic on the line. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this for this transfer. I can either haul this line up, which takes this weight and transfers it directly off of here. Okay, that's one option. Now, because we are going this way, um, what we want to do essentially is cinch this down, okay? Um, with the lowering method, obviously you go as close as possible and then pay it out as far as you have to, okay? So I'm gonna go about there, that's pretty, makes me kinda happy there. I'm gonna take that pulley, and depending on the mass on the other end, you may need you know, to create a little bit of a, a block and tackle, if you will. Okay, clip this into here. It doesn't really matter where it needs to go, but just try to keep things as tidy as possible. I'm gonna put that on the bottom. So if we look at this new system here, I got my haul line goes in, into the Grion, and then out, all right? So I'm gonna just pull this up, and now you see that Grion take the weight. I've transferred the load off the, uh, the rig. Now, we need to at least pull this up a good foot, foot and a half minimum, just to be able to push that knot through to the other side. So just keep pulling this up. And that's probably good enough right there. All right, get rid of this pulley. Now I'm gonna just tie this back here. I'm just gonna throw a daisy chain in here just so I don't accidentally bump it and lose control. Okay, excellent. Now, okay, I'm gonna just open up my Grion, feed that rope down and through, or sorry, open up my rig so I can push that knot through. There we go. Now, just cinch that up as much as you can, okay? Now here, I wanna lower out the Grion, and you know, because of the situation, I wanna pull this tight, minimizes, you know, overloading any of this sort of stuff. Okay, great. Okay, 
undo my daisy chain and run this rope up and over top of the faceplate of the Grion. And I'm just gonna lower that out. All undone. Disconnect things, tidy up. All right, there we go. So now we're right back here, okay? Pass that knot through this device from this upper side to the lower side. Now, uh, something I want to address uh, from the last video, a lot of people were asking questions about having to put a friction carabiner on the, the Grion here. So <clears throat> I'm gonna just do something here and kind of reverse this and we'll talk about that situation. So if I were to re reverse this, I'm gonna just bury this here, give myself as much throw as I possibly can. Okay, that's nice and tight. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that this doesn't accidentally get bumped. So I'm gonna tie this back with a couple loops of a daisy chain. Now, if I need to pass this knot back into the system or original video that I post, posted was passing this knot through the system in a lowering sis, uh, situation. There was questions about this. So here we are. I'm going to just lower out the little bit of slack here or a little bit of tension. Open this back up. And I'm going to give myself a healthy amount of room here. Okay, lock that up. All right, so because of this slack here, I'm gonna have to re release the tension off this Grion and transfer that load back to this rig. Now, because of that, I need to have that much rope left here to lower it out. The question I got from a couple people was I didn't add a friction carabiner here. And the reason being is, it's not required providing that you keep that rope over top of that faceplate. The technical notice with Petzl is you need a, uh, a friction carabiner in the vertical orientation, not necessarily in the, the horizontal orientation or the bottom orientation like we have here. Obviously we're operating off a high directional. So in this case, we don't technically need it. Now, lower this out. Now, the friction carabiner would be very handy if you were lowering a two-person load, okay? Absolutely, that would be a really good thing. Now, in this case, the faceplate isn't really, it's not really doing a whole lot, okay? It doesn't really help us. We'd end up having to pull this back even further to achieve that goal that we're going for. Now. This does give me that ability to control it really nicely. Absolutely, great. But it's still not required. What is required from the manufacturer and from just the aspect of how this device is operated is to ensure that this rope stays over top of this bar and over that faceplate. So when you're lowering, all you have to do is this. Okay, here we go. We're getting to that point where Things are gonna start loading up on us. Pull that tail out. Okay. Excellent. There we go, clean this up. All right, so I hope that answers the question for those individuals that were wondering about that friction carabiner on the Grion. Not required, providing you can keep the rope over top of the faceplate. Also, same situation here with the rig or the ID, whatever. Um, it is out of habit that I just toss that in there for the rigs and the IDs, and then I can continue to lower. Okay, excellent. All right, well, 
Thank you very much for tuning into today's episode. That was awesome. I hope that you got something out of it. That little bonus section, um, diving into a question that I received from a couple people about that whole redirectional carabiner. There is this aspect that you need it, but realistically, don't you don't as long as you're keeping that rope fed over top of that face plate. Now, in the vertical orientation, upside down, or whatever you want to call it up there, if it's coming from the top down, yes, the manufacturer does supersede everything I just said, and you do require it. Now, also, if this changes in the next couple months and the technical notice does, you know, come out and say, hey, you do need that friction carabiner. That supersedes everything that I say today. Things do change. Stay up to date with your manufacturer specifications. Check out that website for the most up-to-date information. And, you know, as of today, that's what we're talking about. So yeah, if you do like this episode, make sure to hit the like button, comment down below. Let me know what you're doing out there in the field, what you think of this episode. Make sure to subscribe down here in the right corner. Hit the bell for notifications as I put out new content every Sunday. If you haven't already, check out my podcast. And and yes, until next time.